Wasabi Wallet. I'm fairly private. What's up, everyone? Ben with the BTC Sessions here, and this is your daily session. Huddle that Bitcoin. Before we dive in, of course, shout out to sponsors of the show, Ledin.io. This is where you can use your Bitcoin for a couple, actually a few different services, uh, one of which is a Bitcoin savings account where you can earn Bitcoin on your Bitcoin paid in Bitcoin. So uh, you can earn a an annual interest rate there. You can also obtain a Bitcoin bag loan. That's where you use your Bitcoin as collateral to obtain a US or Canadian dollar loan. So if you're trying to get your hands on dollars, but you don't want to sell your Bitcoin because you're worried about the price appreciation, uh, this could be an option for you. And lastly, they have their B2X or buy 2 x product. And that's where if you're a huge Bitcoin bull, you can get double the exposure to Bitcoin through that. Uh, so if you want to check them out, there's a link down below. If you opt to get a loan, they'll actually, uh, they've got a special deal through that link where they will give you an additional 50 bucks worth of Bitcoin credited to your account. And secondly, of course, if you're involved in Bitcoin, then privacy is an important thing. One of the things that I regularly use for that is NordVPN. So this hides your IP address. It can encrypt your browsing data and has a bunch of other added benefits like unlocking geoblock content. So if you can't access something in a current in your current country or if you're traveling abroad, well, this can fix that for you. Um, and if you click the link that I have down below, then you get a special deal where it's only a few bucks a month. And with that, let's dive into the news. Uh, so we have Bitcoin bull Tim Draper uh, throwing out some numbers as far as price prediction. He's saying that Lightning Network will drive Bitcoin uh, to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars by twenty twenty three. So um, he says f- about four years out. I okay. So <laughs> let, let's first. Uh, Oh, let's just read his quote first. It's because of Lightning Network and Open Node and maybe others that are allowing us to spend Bitcoin very freely and quickly so that it's not just a store of value, but can be used for micropayments. It can be used for re- retail. It can be used all over. Um, so that's kind of his reasoning as to why he thinks it's going to explode in value. I I got to disagree with Tim Draper here, not on price point. I don't think that that's an outlandish price point um, in the coming years at all. I think the timing might be a little bit off, and I don't think the reasoning really lines up. Um, I mean, (sighs) why? We've seen Bitcoin pushed... Um, we've, tr- we've seen the pushes for Bitcoin adoption in the forms of merchant adoption. And so I don't think that will be the driver behind price appreciation. Um, just because somebody accepts Bitcoin for a product or service doesn't mean somebody's going to exchange their currency for another currency just to pay with that currency. However, I do think there's some other interesting approaches to that will help with uh, adoption and more people getting into the Bitcoin space and thus bolstering the price. So um, one of them is the inverse of that. And we talked about this other the other day with Lolly and Fold and other programs coming up where you get sats back, basically rewards points in the form of Bitcoin when spending your fiat currency. I really like that idea because I spent a lot of Bitcoin early on. Um, you know, when it was pretty much flat in 2014, 2015. And uh, I look back and I definitely got a lot of multi hundred dollar lattes. Uh, So now doing the inverse where I can buy uh, coffee or whatever shop online with regular dollars or my credit card or whatever, and then get rewarded with Bitcoin. That's something I'm super interested in. And I think it will also get people curious when they wonder about the potential price appreciation of what they deem to be rewards points, discovering that they can withdraw them to their own wallet and spend them elsewhere. I think that will be an interesting experiment to see if that helps. Now, another thing that I think will be helpful is in the last bull run, We saw a lot of people dive into altcoins, I think a lot because Bitcoin seemed too expensive. They looked at the price tag of an entire Bitcoin and said, damn, 10 grand, 20 grand. I can't afford that. Maybe I'll grab some Litecoin. Maybe I'll grab some God forbid Bitcoin cash. I'm so sorry if you grab some Bitcoin cash. Uh, You know, I think people 
dove into things like Ripple because they saw it and they're like, oh, it's only $3.50. That's cheap, not realizing that it was super overpriced. Um, so I think the drive towards sats, valuing things in Satoshis and using that as kind of like the standard unit of the account, I think that push is going to help because then all of a sudden people aren't going to be saying, Oh, it's it's overpriced if they're looking at that that price point. You know, if you can buy, you know, a few thousand sats for a dollar, then that doesn't seem that bad. Even when it goes up, even at million dollar Bitcoin, you get a hundred sats for a dollar. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? Uh, so I think that mentally that will help people get over that hump. Of course, you'll still be able to look at the price of an entire Bitcoin. But if the sooner we get into the idea of frame, framing that as 100 million sats, the better, I would say. Now, with that, I do believe that Lightning Network contributes to that SAT standard, but it also contributes to, once again, kind of easy movement of capital. So those, if they're finding it, and, and prices will go up when transacting on base layer Bitcoin, that's obvious, there's limited block space. But I think that people will find it easier transacting on Lightning um, when it comes to cheap transactions, and that will further open it up to regular everyday people. You know, at the height of the bull market in 2017, you know, fees were expensive. You know, if you roll, if you rode the entire wave and you were making a sale near the top, then you didn't give a shit if you dropped 10, 30 or 50 bucks on a transaction fee because you probably made a ton of money. But if you had just gotten in and you were trying to move Bitcoin on a regular wallet and you were seeing that you were, you were probably getting pretty disillusioned and especially if you bought the top and you tried to move it you lost money in fees that way not understanding how they worked yet and then the price dropped afterwards it, it was probably a tough uh learning experience for a lot of people and so i think lightning network can help with that so i also think that his 2023 projection is a little off and the reason i say that is I still very much believe that things are going to be hinging on the having and around the having, uh, namely the 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 year to year and a half after the having. So um, having in 2012, while well, 2013 we saw the explosion in price. Having in 2016, we saw a big explosion in mania in 2017. My anticipation is having next year, 2021, is kind of a mania year. But if you jump forward a couple of years after that, in that kind of four-year time horizon, 2023 could very much be the middle of the bear market next time around. Um, so I think that if we see a, a repeat, or not even necessarily a repeat, but if history does indeed rhyme, uh, then we could be in the depths of the bear market in 2023, which may not even be that bad. Like it may be multiples higher than we are right now. Um, but in comparison, if we uh, if we saw a price like that in between, it would be a sad sight to see for some people. Um, anyways, what do you think? What do you think about price? Do you think Tim is way off? Do you think this is a reasonable number? Do you think he overshot, undershot? I don't know. Let me know. Let's move on here. I wanted to uh, bring up um, a, a security upgrade for the cold card wallet. So those of you are unfamiliar, there's a lot of different hardware wallets, basically devices that act as a vault for your Bitcoin. One of them is the cold card and it's, it's one of my favorite. In fact, I'd say it is my favorite hardware wallet. Um, now, I will say that uh, other devices like the Trezor and Ledger, because of their user interface, if you use theirs, it's a little bit cleaner and prettier and less intimidating to newcomers. But with that comes security, not necessarily security in all instances, but definitely privacy trade-offs. And I would say mild security trade-offs, depending on how you're utilizing it. Um, but I really, really do love the cold card. And so uh, this came up, I had somebody tag me on Twitter about it saying, see, I mean, cold card's still too too early. There's still some bugs to be worked out. So this is a security uh, upgrade that uh, has been now rolled out. Um, 
and it was a vulnerability uh, with cold card. And the way it worked is on cold card, you can do something uh, called a partially signed Bitcoin transaction. And the way it works is the device itself never has to plug into the computer itself. Uh, You actually create a transaction on your computer and then you take that file that you create on your computer and put it on an SD card, you plug it into your cold card wallet, you sign the transaction and say, yes, I'd like to spend that. Then you take the SD card out and you plug it back into the computer. And so what does this do? Well, um, the attack vector here is in no way a way to steal money from a cold card user. So um, I'm going to go over to uh, Col- CoinKite, which is Cold Card and Rodolfo. Um, this is their kind of their their summary of, of what this is. So first, what's required to do this attack? Um, so first of all, the attacker must have your XPUB, where your extended public key, which means all of the potential addresses and paths of different addresses that could be accessible to your private key. Um, they also need to have access. They need to have like a physical, probably man in the middle attack, um, or I guess like a compromised computer, but basically they need to get access to not only your extended public key, but your partially signed Bitcoin transaction as you're pouring it over. Um, and so what the attack could feasibly look like is you create a transaction you use your cold card to sign it and say, yes, I approve that I would like to send this amount of Bitcoin here and then the change is going to come back to me. What attacker an attacker could feasibly do if in between that transaction and actually approving it on your computer, uh, they could get a hold of your partially signed Bitcoin transaction. They could um, play with the change as in where does the change go within your wallet? So your wallet will have different paths of different addresses and there's just millions upon millions of addresses you can create with a single private key, (coughs) Um, which can be very, very difficult uh, to find and some computationally impossible unless you knew the exact path that your wallet did to, to create that particular address. Well, This individual could feasibly send the change from your transaction to an address that you would just computationally not be able to find. So you would still own it. The private key would still be that you have would still be the key to that money. The attacker would not have access to the funds, but they would have leverage over you. They would be able to say, hey, what I've done is I've sent your money, what X amount of change, which could be a little bit, which could be a lot depending on the transaction and the UTXO you're using, they could say, hey, your your money is locked up in a particular location. You technically have the keys, but you won't be able to ever find it. And so I'm going to essentially bribe you to release the information of what wallet address it's under so that you can send it back and utilize it again. So it's essentially like a ransomware attack, um, but they do need your XPUB and they do need uh, access to your partially signed Bitcoin transactions, like a man in the middle attack. Now, this does not work if you're actually, funny enough, it doesn't work if you're plugging the cold card directly into your computer you, via the USB because the USB is end to end encrypted. So, you know, like for somebody to actually execute this attack, it would be, it's, it's, pretty unlikely. Um, And even still, there's the risk of, you know, if they successfully pull it off, maybe the change is just, it's barely anything and they have no leverage to even hold over your head. So it's, it seems like it could be a lot of effort for, for not a lot of reward, but who knows? Um, anyways, it was, it was patched and rolled out in a security update that you can now get for your cold card. I will link to that down below. I'll also link to my cold card tutorial video. So if you're unsure how to upgrade your cold card, um, you can check that out. It's pretty easy. Um, 
And yeah, so so that's that. Now, there was a little bit of banter back and forth between the people that disclosed this bug and Rodolfo on Twitter. Um, so the people that, uh, so the charlatan, he works with, uh, God, why is the name escaping me now? Uh, oh yeah, Shift Crypto. So they make the Bitbox, which is another, from what I hear, pretty good hardware wallet. I haven't used it myself, but um, I hear good things. Either way, so they disclosed it, but there's a little bit of banter back and forth regarding how it was disclosed. They said it wasn't particularly great um, rolling out an update in public disclosure without saying this is a security update, um, but just rolling it out as a regular update so that people Typically, if you say security update, then people will update quicker. Um, and so they just said like, hey, you got to you got to be more careful with this. Um, whereas Rodolfo was saying this attack vector is, you know, while it's nice that it got disclosed and it's patched and everything, it wasn't really a huge threat. It kind of came across as a little bit of a a. in, in his words, a marketing ploy from a competitor. Um, either way. I don't really give a shit. Um, I'm just happy that open source software is doing its thing, that people are using eyeballs and and fixing things and things are getting patched, which is the strength of open soft source software. So yay, go open source. Um, anyways, let me wa- know what you think. Uh, does this worry you? Do you, do you care? Um, do you like the cold card? Have you tried the Bitbox? Do you like it? Or do you prefer a different hardware wallet? I'm curious to hear. Moving on, uh, Bact is in, disco- in discussions to offer cash settled Bitcoin futures in Singapore. So Bact uh, recently launched launched its physically settled Bitcoin futures contract. So a futures contract allows you to speculate on the future price of Bitcoin. Um, now, previously, the CME did launch its futures in late 2018, actually. So they've been going for well over a year. Bact launched not too long ago, I believe back in the summer, at least a couple months back, uh, which kind of landed with a thud. There wasn't too much fanfare, but volume has been gradually picking up. Um, so recently, they've now said due to customer demand, um, instead of the physically settled futures, which means once a contract expires, you are paid out in Bitcoin. So uh, a, a contract owner is paid in the Bitcoin that they're owed, whereas with the CME, they're paid in cash. Uh, Bact is also going to offer cash settled futures contracts, um, which means that they would be now the only company offering both. So, I mean, in general, I think this is a good thing. More options for the market. Great. Um, but I, the more exciting thing for me would be if this spurs the CME into trying to expedite allowing for physically settled Bitcoin futures again um, on their platform this time. So the cash settled ones, I I don't really care for because it's more just people are placing bets with dollars and there's not as much, you know, there's, there's no pinch to try and get that Bitcoin if there's a bad call. I like the physically settled stuff. I think that's a bit more exciting to hear about. Um, but yeah, hopefully this spurs on the CME to offer both products as well. Um, as far as it being located in Singapore, it will be accessible worldwide, just as the CME is accessible worldwide as well. Uh, moving on to the final thing I wanted to touch on. Uh, Craig Wright predicted that Bitcoin and Lightning would be dead, not quite by now, but in two days. <laughs> so so gear up, everybody. It's all over in two days. Uh, he said that there was essentially like a vulnerability with SegWit that would be disclosed on November 15th, 2019. He said this exactly. Well, a year, just two days shy of a year ago. So he said this on November 15th of 2018. Um, Haven't really heard much about it uh, as of late. So here's the actual screenshot of the tweet. Responsible disclosure on BTC and LTC and the flaw that SegWit added and which is not able to be repaired, so dead on arrival, is my telling you in a year from now, it will be released. That is the best you get. BTC and LTC will be shown to have no utility and are dead. Dead coin walking. Uh, So, 
I don't know. What do you think? I, I mean, I guess we'll find out as of Saturday because that will be the 16th. I'm guessing nothing at all happens. And when somebody asks him about it, he'll be like, well, you just wait until next date I list in the future, at which point he'll list another future date. Uh, it's, it's a pattern with Craig. Um, anyways, according to him also, it will again, he's going to torpedo Bitcoin in January when he gets access to the Tulip Trust um, and he'll dump all his Bitcoin and it's, none of this is going to happen. None of this is going to happen. Uh, anyways, best of luck, Craig and BSV fans. I look forward to Saturday when nothing at all has happened. And with that, I'm going to wrap up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, hit like, subscribe, share, always hit share. It's great to get more people watching these videos. If you want to help out in another way, you can hit the sponsors down below. So Ledin and Nord, both those links are in the show notes. And also check out Wasabi Wallet. It's always great to introduce more privacy when it comes to your Bitcoin. It's good to have that financial privacy and get your uh, UTXOs away from prying eyes. You never know who's looking at that stuff so check out wasabi uh links to the tutorial i did that down as low down below as well and finally if you really like what you saw you can always drop me a lightning network tip at my tip and me page and with that i am out have a wonderful evening and i will see you tomorrow for your daily session <laughs>